Good morning. Today we are discussing acyclovir, a foundational agent in antiviral pharmacotherapy. Its development marked a significant leap in our ability to selectively and safely target herpes viruses. Understanding its clinical pharmacology is paramount for its effective and safe use. Acyclovir is a synthetic guanosine analog, and its elegant mechanism of action lies in its selective activation. Unlike a broad-spectrum antiviral that might indiscriminately affect host cells, acyclovir remains largely inert until it encounters a virally infected cell. Inside this cell, the viral enzyme thymidine kinase, which is unique to herpes viruses, phosphorylates acyclovir into its monophosphate form. This initial phosphorylation is the key rate-limiting step and the basis for the drug's remarkable selectivity. Subsequently, host cellular kinases take over, adding two more phosphate groups to form the active metabolite acyclovir triphosphate. This triphosphate form is a potent competitive inhibitor of viral DNA polymerase, the enzyme responsible for replicating viral genetic material. Furthermore, when it's mistakenly incorporated into the growing viral DNA chain, the absence of a 3' hydroxyl group on the acyclovir molecule causes chain termination, a dead end for the virus's replication process. This dual mechanism of inhibition and chain termination effectively halts viral proliferation, mitigating the clinical manifestations of the infection. From a clinical perspective, acyclovir is the drug of choice for a range of infections caused by the herpes viridae family. Its primary indications include infections from herpes simplex virus types 1 and 2, which cause oral and genital herpes respectively. It is also highly effective against the varicella zoster virus, responsible for both chickenpox and shingles. Beyond managing these common infections, acyclovir is a cornerstone in treating severe and life-threatening conditions like HSV encephalitis and disseminated herpes infections, particularly in immunocompromised patients. In these serious cases, intravenous administration is the standard of care to achieve adequate systemic drug concentrations. Prophylaxis with acyclovir is also a critical strategy in specific patient populations, such as organ transplant recipients, to prevent the devastating consequences of viral reactivation. While acyclovir is generally well tolerated, clinicians must be acutely aware of its potential contraindications and cautions. The most significant concern, particularly with the intravenous formulation, is dose-dependent nephrotoxicity. Acyclovir is primarily eliminated by the kidneys, and if administered too quickly or in a dehydrated patient, it can precipitate within the renal tubules, leading to acute crystalline nephropathy. To prevent this, IV infusions must be given slowly over at least one hour, and maintaining adequate patient hydration is non-negotiable. Furthermore, in patients with pre-existing renal impairment, careful dosage adjustment based on creatinine clearance is absolutely essential. Another important, though less frequent, adverse effect is neurotoxicity, which can manifest as confusion, lethargy, or hallucinations. This is more common in elderly patients and those with renal dysfunction, and it is thought to be mediated by an active metabolite. In practice, a common point of discussion or even controversy surrounds the drug's oral bioavailability. Its low and variable absorption from the gut is a major reason for the frequent dosing regimens required to maintain therapeutic levels. This is why its prodrug, valacyclovir, was developed, offering a much higher bioavailability and allowing for more convenient twice-daily dosing. The choice between these two agents often involves a balance of cost, patient adherence, and the specific clinical scenario. For instance, while valacyclovir is often preferred for convenience in suppressive therapy, the cost-effectiveness of generic acyclovir remains an important consideration. Additionally, while acyclovir is a powerful therapeutic tool, it does not eradicate the latent virus from the host's body.
The virus can persist in nerve ganglia and reactivate at a later date, which is a crucial point to communicate to patients. Therefore, therapy is aimed at disease management rather than a definitive cure. Thank you for your attention. Please let me know if you have any questions.